G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator with Mags and welcome back aboard the X-Cub. So today we are in Africa, Mauritania to be exact, and we are going to be checking out something that I've always wanted to see, but never bothered to even try and check out in any other flight simulator before. Today we're heading to the Eye of the Sahara. So our starting point is Shingeti Airport, code CGT, which is about 30 minutes southwest of the Eye as the X-Cub flies. It's nothing more than an outback style dirt strip, but it's as close as we can get to the eye without air spawning in the sim. And we're taking the X-Cub as I plan to land in the center of the eye. Now, as I said before, I've never been here in this sim before or in any other sim before because there really hasn't been any point. The eye of the Sahara is a geological feature. To see the eye, you need a combination of a high quality terrain mesh and satellite photography. So unless you wanted to mess around with gigs of ortho scenery in the past, it's never really shown up on any previous simulations. But anyways, let's take a quick look where you can find this yourself. All right, so you can just search CGT in order to get to the closest airport. However, for those of you who like to map scroll like I do, you can see the eye is actually visible on the terrain in that point just before the map goes to grey. It's in northwestern Africa obviously, and CGT is the closest airfield to the eye. So once you set arrival and departure on CGT, zoom out to the point where you can actually see where the eye is, and just add another waypoint. Flight time is an hour round trip for you to return to the airfield, about 30 minutes to get there, not counting your sightseeing time. Okay, so a couple of other things to note. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Raichet structure, is about 40 kilometers in diameter, so if you want to get a good look at it, you're going to need to go high. For this flight, we'll actually be hitting the max flight altitude of the X-Cub at 14,000 feet before we drop into the center for a landing, but if you really want to see it in its full glory, you'll want to consider something that can go a little higher than that. Remember, the best photos of the Eye are actually taken from orbit. So you'll be about halfway to the eye by the time you get your first clear look at it. Now I'm sure the comment section has already started getting spammed with this, but yes, this is one of the places that some claim may be the location of the lost city of Atlantis, or at least the origin of the mythology of the city. Do I believe it? Well, I'd try to keep an open mind, but I would rather a little fact over theory. So if somebody wants to go into a little literal digging to work that out, I'm all for it. What is known for sure, however, is this is not an impact crater. What it exactly is and how it was formed is still under a certain level of debate. The best guess is that it is, or rather was, a blister of lava that was upthrust to the surface during a major geological event somewhere up to 100 million years ago and then collapsed and eroded away over time due to the effects of wind and water. It does appear that at some point the crater or the bowl did contain water. Up until around 6,000 years ago, the area of the Sahara around the eye was actually tropical and contained extremely high levels of rainfall as well as vegetation. And about 11,000 years ago, the area would have been very close to sea level. So we've now begun our descent from 14,000 feet down past 10,000 feet heading for the bowl and you can kind of get a sense of the scale of what you are seeing. Astronauts actually use the eye as a marker from orbiters, it's one of the easiest to spot geological structures on the planet. 
In fact, the full scale of the eye wasn't actually understood until astronauts on the Gemini 4 mission were instructed to photograph the Earth looking for sites of impact craters. This was one of the earliest sites that they found, and investigations into the site began in earnest after that, and continued through until around 2011, I think the last expedition into the area was done, although the area is still being researched. Another thing that is known about the site is that it has a high concentration of Acheulean artifacts. Now, the Acheulean period ended roughly 130,000 years ago, but extends back as far as 1.7 million years ago, and it includes most of what we commonly know as Stone Age humans. It's a pretty broad time zone, but it does indicate that early humans did live at or around the area for a long period of time. This likely ended, as I said earlier, when a shifting climate began turning the Sahara region into the desert we know today. Now, this is where things start getting really fun, because I was not expecting this. As I was descending into the eye to set up to go and land in the centre, I spotted something that shouldn't be there. On the east side of the innermost circle of the eye, next to what looks like a small inlet or outlet, uh, for a flowing water near where there's some vegetation, there is a building where, at least as far as I know, no building should be inside of the eye. In fact, I don't think there are any major structures inside of the eye at all. Now, you might think this is just a little bit odd. The algorithm does strange things. It put full buildings on top of Mount Fuji, and it made the monolith in Melbourne. I've showed both of those. However, that's... I have some understanding of how the algorithm works, and it won't create a building out of nothing. It has to see something that it thinks is a building to begin with. So I decided to load up the Bing Maps aerial and satellite photography that the algorithm was actually playing with when it was rendering this area, and I come across something interesting. There is, in fact, what appears to be the ruins or the remains of some kind of fort and it matches the shape of the building perfectly. Now, I don't think this is some ancient structure by any means. In fact, I'm pretty sure somebody probably knows exactly what this is. Unfortunately, every time I did a search on any kind of combination of ruins, uh, remains of buildings, structures within the eye, you're immediately buried in articles about whether or this is or not the location of Atlantis, because people want to argue over that rather than actually discussing things that are there. So, I have no idea exactly what it is, but it does have the approximate shape of an old-style fort. And that actually got me thinking. I was reading an article about a year or so ago about uh, an ancient village, or at least nearly a 2,000-year-old village, that was discovered somewhere near Syria, and it was discovered in the desert, and it was picked up on spy satellite photography, but it had actually been visible in aerial photography dating back to almost World War II. The thing was, because nobody was looking at this particular photography for, you know, 2,000 year old villages, nobody realised it was there, but that's about what remained of it, a rough outline of what was the original walls around the village and the rough shape of all the buildings. In fact, I think when they actually went there, a lot of the buildings were actually standing and still had walls up to six feet tall. Now, the algorithm for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it doesn't understand what a building is. Let's make that clear. It doesn't actually understand what a building is. It's designed to look at a map and see the lines that indicate a structure, and then it builds a structure on those lines, which is what it did here. It saw the remains of the fort in the image, or the whatever it was in the image, saw it with straight lines, it recognised that this was a structure, and so it created a structure. It didn't have much information to work with, so what you got was that single-storey warehouse that had a really odd shape, but it still created that to an exact measure. I'm wondering, since this algorithm is now going over the entire world and all of the satellite and aerial photography for the entire planet, whether or not Microsoft Flight Simulator could actually, and the algorithm itself, could actually be used as a manner of trying to find more of these things that people just haven't realised are there because the wrong people are looking at the wrong photographs or nobody's looking at those particular photographs at all. Is it possible we're going to find more structures or at least the remains of structures because this algorithm is going to spot them and create a virtual building on top of them, almost like a virtual tombstone giving away their location. 
it's just something to think about. It's it just seems really interesting. And if anybody actually knows what that fort or whatever it is is, I am really curious, and I honestly can find no information on it anywhere. I'm sure there's information on it somewhere. Somebody shoot me a link in the comment section down below because I really want to know. Anyways, just bringing the aircraft around now, and it is time to finally land in the center. So the landing here was simple enough. Uh, fairly gentle rise. I'm sure in real life this is actually really rocky and it's not something you could land on. But here in Microsoft Flight Simulator it's relatively smooth. It was a, It's a relatively gentle hill. I landed probably a little close to the top and slightly too fast, so I sort of bounced over it. But it was shallow enough on the far side to gently bring the aircraft to a stop under normal brakes. So pretty straightforward and easy landing. Not the most complicated if you're into bush flying, but it's a site worth visiting, regardless. And just hard under the brakes and into the stop, and then it's a simple matter of turning the plane around and taxiing up to the peak. So anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it an interesting place to go to, and I hope you actually fly out here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and oh, there was a little bit of food for thought that uh, sort of popped up into the middle of it as well. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care.